Hi there, it's Frank Foley again, and I've got another little literary takeaway for you from Catherine Mansfield and her story, The Fly, which I absolutely love. It's a great little short story, um, published in 1923 in the collection The Dove's Nest. Um, you know, Catherine Mansfield's a great short story writer. There's Bliss and the, in the German pension and the doll's house and the garden party, which I will do other little videos on as well but this one the fly slightly different for her i think um so i'm going to break it down into three sections i like finding kind of um you know phases in stories and you know to see where you can find structural points to move through and i think this this breaks down into three nice pieces really so first of all you have um a an old worker for a company he, who is called Woody Field and he goes back to the city he's retired he goes back to the city to see his ex-boss um, and they have a meeting and Woody Field is old and the suggestion is that he is kind of on his way you know his, his path now is really to death <laughs> it's kind of bleak but it is what it is um and anyway he's not dying but you know he's pretty old and and you know the the boss is feeling quite smug about the fact that woody feels old and the boss is still you know running the company and everything but they share some banter and you know they share a conversation and uh, the boss gives uh, woody for some uh, some you know nipper whiskey and everything like that and it's all very it's a bit uncomfortable but it's okay that's kind of the first part of the story and it sets up, you know, the rest of the story. What happens is that the turn is 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 that Woody Field brings up the fact that he's been to see his son who died in the First World War. And he talks very um, kind of elegantly, sentimentally about his son and, and you know, and, and how he misses him and everything and, and how he went to see the grave and the grave was beautiful and that kind of thing. And you know, it kind of misses the the deep trauma of you know the death of a child in a way it's kind of flowers it a little bit anyway second part really is and these aren't equal really but it's just different phases of the story the second bit is after woody field leaves the boss is on his own in his in his office and he has a time to think and he he thinks of his son who also died in the first world war um this is a huge trauma for him the difference between the way woody field talks about his son as beautiful and it's all kind of very kind of um, angelic in a way this is not the same for the boss the boss feels deeply traumatized by this but he's kind of covering it you, you feel this deep pain and and mansfield's such a clever writer you know the way she crafts these stories that um it, with a real economy of style she kind of lets you feel that there's there's an untold story in terms of the relationship between the father and the son um you know that there, there, there seems to be guilt and remorse on his part um which he then seems to slide into a, a blaming of the dead son um you know that there was something dysfunctional about their relationship which probably came from the father um this is not really kind of, you know, this is not a novel, so it's not kind of delved into and, and unpa unpacked, but uh, there's just that hint of it. So that's kind of the middle part of the story. And then the, st and then the story turns because the, 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 the boss suddenly notices a fly has fallen into his the inkwell on his desk and is struggling to get out. And um, he basically helps it out. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end because I really think you should read it and I don't want to spoil it for you. But there is this kind of power struggle at the end. Nothing to do with Jeff Goldblum, by the way. Um, so, you know, this is a lovely little story. Um, you know, th there's themes of power. There's the, there's the power and hierarchy in terms of the boss and his worker, um, youth and age. Uh, and at the end, you know, the, the boss um, in the in the position of power over the fly. Um, Catherine Mansfield's brother had died in the First World War and she was devastated. Um, and, you know, there is that sense, especially with that last section of the story, there is this sense that there is, uh, you know, of, of um, like, um, uh, 
you know, kind of echo of the First World War there, of the, you know, these young, innocent people being sent off, struggling to survive and just being sent off kind of anonymously by these generals who are 50 miles back from the front um and and needlessly suffering and dying in their thousands um there's that kind of hint of 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 that in the way the boss and and deals with the fly at the end which is you know which is uh, yeah i'm not gonna say any more because you really need to read it but um yeah wonderful little story beautifully constructed structurally i love it um one of just one of my favorite little stories and um yeah i i'm gonna leave it there because i really think you should go and read it if i can find a public domain copy as always i was trying to link it underneath but if you get a chance get a collection of catherine mansfield short stories anyway because there's so many good ones um but i've been talking about the fly by catherine mansfield and i think you should read it thanks very much cheers <laughs>